First, to the families of the victims here today and across the country, I am sorry for your loss, and I believe you are owed an apology because this country should have done better. There is no reason why we lost 1.2 million people, more than any country on the globe, when we have the most sophisticated medical system. This committee must deliver real answers so it never happens again, and I am here today to help in that mission. As you know, New York was hit first and worst by COVID through no fault of its own. I did daily briefings and millions listened in because they wanted, no, because they needed information and guidance. And yes, I often vehemently disagreed with President Trump because from day one, he willfully deceived the American people, denying COVID's very real threat telling us that it was like the flu, it would go away by Easter, it was a democratic hoax, use Clorox. And his lies and denials delayed our response, let the virus spread, and this country never caught up. Trump literally said, I take no responsibility, and he fabricated political attacks, blaming Democratic governors including saying that New York issued a health order on March 25th, having COVID positive people enter nursing homes from hospitals, which recklessly and needlessly caused thousands of deaths. And then Trump weaponized the Department of Justice, starting investigations against New York and three other Democratic states. Trump's shocking allegations, all false, were designed to shift blame from him to Democrats, and they did. They also created great pain, confusion, and fear for families. And this subcommittee, run by Republicans, repeats the Trump lies and deceptions, and is, it inherently makes two powerful admissions. First, their report does not deny Contrary to what New York Republicans said for four years, it does not deny that it was actually the Trump administration, the CMS and CDC, that first said in early March that COVID-positive people could go from hospitals to nursing homes, even if they were still infectious. That was your ruling. The committee attempts to argue that the New York advisory didn't follow the CMS guidance and overrode safety laws. But that has already been investigated by the New York Attorney General, who said you're wrong, and who confirmed the March 25th advisory was in total compliance with federal guidelines, and that all New York's nursing home laws remained in effect, period. In addition, the report provides no evidence to support Trump's main allegation, repeated for three years, that New York's guidance killed thousands in nursing homes. In fact, the report finds no causality whatsoever, not one death, all hype. Why? Because it never happened. All credible studies now say that COVID came into nursing homes through community spread and infected staff, not hospital admissions or readmissions. Numbers don't lie. 35 states had a higher death rate in nursing homes than New York, including Ohio. Most Republican states actually had a higher death rate in nursing homes than New York in 2020. And that fact damns them and reveals their hypocrisy. But these are all diversions to blame New York and other states for the culpability of the federal response, which was malpractice. There was no preparation, no PPE, no testing, no masks, no science, no leadership. As one Republican governor said about Trump, the general was missing in action leaving 50 states bidding against each other for scarce medical supplies. It was the COVID hunger games. The federal government was nowhere to be found. New Yorkers remember well those traumatic days when the only sound that echoed through the empty streets were the constant sirens from ambulances, when mass graves were being dug on Hearts Islands, 
when bodies were being stored in refrigerated trucks. Our hospital system nearly collapsed, and Trump was threatening to send federal troops to blockade New York so no one could leave. That was the federal response. And yes, New Yorkers were scared, but they were New York tough, and they showed that when show that they responded to government leadership when they believed it was based on facts. In that moment in New York, there were no Democrats and Republicans. There were just New Yorkers helping and relying on each other. They were guided by their better angels. They followed science, took vaccines, wore masks, and acted responsibly one for another. New Yorkers' heroic actions brought us back from the brink and saved many, many lives. When COVID started in 2020, we had the highest death rate in the country. But at the end of 2021, remarkably, New York had a lower death rate than 30 states. But even with all New Yorkers did, we lost far too many. And I'm sorry for every life lost. In closing, I know this is a political year, and I have testified before many, many congressional committees. But this issue really matters. There will be another pandemic, and they will pull out your report for guidance. I hope it has real answers. God forbid 1.2 million people died in vain. Thank you.